This was my kitchen when I first moved into this cabin one year ago. Yes, for those who are new, I moved from London to a cheap cabin in the Swedish countryside where I know absolutely no one. But that's not the story of today because I finally renovated my kitchen without using anything pre-made and I will show you how in this video. This past year, this kitchen area changed so much. I tore out the wall between the two back rooms so I could create a lobby area with a small toilet and a larger kitchen with a new window. I took out the original cabinets and very quickly made a wobbly freestanding counter that was covered in garbage bags so I had a sink for winter. It remained like this until I was finally ready to finish it just a few weeks ago. In the previous video I shared the first stages of making this new kitchen. This is what happened. I fixed a small section of counter I'd already built to the walls, installed a plant shelf between the counter and the window to take advantage of the light. I put in a framework for the new counter and fixed a pine worktop. I started working on the legs and well, I left it there because the video was getting much too long and I decided to keep the real good stuff for this makeover video. I spent these past few weeks pretty much non-stop working on this kitchen and I am exhausted. I'm also so excited about finishing it. This kitchen has been a year in the making. If you have been following me for a while, you would know that I've been living with a partly built kitchen for the past year since I bought this house and it was just a countertop with a sink, freestanding, very wobbly because I made it myself without any clue as to how to make a piece of joinery and I used hand tools, I used a hand saw to cut the legs so everything was crooked and I lived with that kitchen for a year. I have this dream of just having this like cabin kind of look this cosy, this minimal, simple, woods everywhere very calm but very comfortable at the same time. My idea for this kitchen very much stems from wanting to do it myself. <laughs> because why buy a kitchen when you can do it yourself? I mean no one ever says that but that's what I was thinking. It's like everybody buys a kitchen that's really expensive but it's just it's just like a table with a sink in it. Wow. Things are expensive and difficult and I cannot afford anything. I cannot afford the nice wood. Basically what they have at the hardware store is what I can buy and what I can afford. So I wasn't originally planning on having an open shelving kitchen, but I also very much realized that I have no experience making anything. And doors, wow, cupboard doors. It's not going to happen. I was very quickly inspired by Japanese design which is very minimal and just has these like interlocking pieces and I thought I would just do a very basic version of that but like you know that even I could make. The most exciting thing is that I now have a kitchen that doesn't wobble and it's huge. It's absolutely huge. It's it's amazing. I even made little cover doors. <laughs> In this video, I will share the rest of the building process and also discuss more about the costs and materials at the very end. What I can say now is that almost all of the timber I used was standard construction timber from the hardware store and it cost less than $350 or euros, which I would say is pretty cheap for a 3 by 3.3 meter kitchen, which is about 10 by 11 feet.
I pretty much stopped filming all of the sanding and the staining that I do all the time because it's constant and it's really boring but these are the shelves I got the first set sanded and now I'm going to stain them I'm really excited about putting them in place I do have to fix the back wall to be able to do that there's so many things going on right now it's really messy I'm just jumping from one thing to the next these parts, all of the detailing that is going to make this kitchen different from other kitchens. <laughs> so this is what is going to make it not just a table with open shelving and wobbly legs. This is what actually inspired me, the Japanese very simple minimalist kitchens that have this beautiful detailing in it, making it just a little bit different. Obviously if this kitchen was made of oak or walnut and it was made by an artisan carpenter, it would look really good. So my version is the rustic version. I'm still excited to put something like this in here, I think. For me, that is what makes it fun. And then I have these. which we're going to slide underneath. There you go. I'm fixing these shelves to the wall because I can't quite figure out how to do it otherwise in this little corner.
They're all a bit wonky. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought they were straight and I thought it was lucky but they're not. I'm going to have to fix them in place because this will be annoying. Because imagine putting something down <laughs> every single time. Okay, I am so excited I'm going to make more shelves. <laughs> working so long every day because this kitchen is really exciting. Yesterday I finished some of the shelving on this side and it looks so good. Ignore the buckets and me <laughs> watering my plants but look at this. I'm starting to put items in here. I put in this bit of wall down here so today I'm going to do the same on that side, put in a couple of cupboard doors and then also work on the rest of the kitchen here, which is still very unfinished. And I also will need to put in this bit of kitchen countertop. I need to cut that first. For now, I am so happy with the way it looks. It looks really spacious and clean.
I'm making a door for this little kitchen sink but I'm realising that this ply is really thin. It's only 6mm <laughs> and it's actually too thin to take screws. So I'll probably have to add some, glue some timber to it. So yeah. <laughs> This fly is really cool though, it's like one of those like birch veneers or something. I like it. I'm curious what it would look like when I stain it. So last night it was dark and I was about to go to bed 
And I walked in the kitchen and I saw my extension cable still running outside the door and I thought, why hasn't that been cleaned up? Then I remembered that I still had to make my kitchen cupboard door. So what I did yesterday is I stained the plywood and I was waiting for that to dry so I could um, glue some timber together. So basically the ply is 6mm so it's too thin to put the little hinges on. I have these gold little hinges and so I basically pieced together a bit of timber so I have a bit more depth to to work with. That looks cute. It's not too dark. I feel like it's upside down but what I did is obviously I cut it myself with the circular saw and I wanted the straight edges, the factory edges, to be on the sides where you can kind of see it so they're on the top and they were run in the middle and the top and I think the pattern looks a little bit nicer the other way around but once it's up there you're not going to see it anymore you're not going to look at it and think oh the cupboard doors are upside down you're just going to think oh that looks really cool yeah it does look better okay let's ignore that can't change it now it's glued together ah huh. interesting glue really does work I hope it Okay, let's not, let's not try and rip it apart now. So this is the thickness and this is where it's going to overlap the little flat section at the top. So I guess we'll do that. This one is spooky. Let's not use this one. I do have to use it. It's the only one I have. Ah, it's a wonky one. I want a wonky one. Looks like I have a couple of doors. This one doesn't want to sit flat for some reason. Ah, oh. oh. doors. Now they're both going to sit flat. I need little door handles. I want little tiny black T bars, which actually would look a little bit like this. So let's just pretend. <laughs> cool handles to come.
I am cutting my last bit of countertop for, for this.
let's run through the cost for this project. <laughs> Kitchens are expensive, so I'm personally actually quite curious to see how this project measures against a normal kitchen. As I said, the space is 3 by 3.3 meters, which is about 10 by 11 feet. And these are the materials I used. This is a pine countertop. They are untreated. They are cheap. They're about 60 euros each. And I used about less than two and a half of them. There's one section over there, another one here, and then there is the last section in the corner. All of these legs are 45 by 45 mil timber. I really like keeping some of the, the timber detailing and some of these knots. Yeah, those are the legs and then the frame underneath the kitchen counter. The shelves are actually exterior cladding, so in Sweden you have these red timber exterior walls and that's actually these. They're quite rough. I sanded them as long as I could, but they've been stained the same colour as everything else. Back here I have my plant shelf, so I did this on purpose. I really wanted to extend the windowsill so I could have plants here and maybe grow some herbs or grow some vegetables. The nicer bits of timber are probably these little rods and then these little rectangular sections which I run underneath the boards. So while I have these really nice shelf supports, I also have these cheap ones. They're just tiny rectangular sections of wood and I think they're actually made to go in a garden because they had pointy ends. <laughs> It's all a mixture of pine and spruce, so the nicer wood is pine and then anything construction is generally a spruce. I used 6mm ply for the cupboard doors. I used a small leftover piece of timber for the apron, which is the same type of wood as the shelving, just a smaller dimension. And for these tiny sections, to separate this tongue and groove is actually about the cheapest that you can get. It's a very rough material. It is actually used for roofing. So again, it's not something that's usually exposed. I do like sometimes that it has this rough detailing like here and I like to use that and expose it. Another detail, this farmhouse sink is from Ikea. The tap is a black matte tap, which is quite cheap. Then an oven will be added here, where I've got my desk. <laughs> and I plan to use just a removable stove top. It's one of those hot plates. 